premier tour of the Dominion, Lord and Lady Bledisloe pay a visit to the Clevedon district near Auckland. There's a large Maori population in the area, and the visitors are given the usual warm Maori welcome. Lord Bledisloe's enormous interest in the farming community has almost become a legend, and his return to New Zealand has meant the renewal of many rural acquaintances. Some years ago, when he was Governor General, Lord Bledisloe donated a trophy to be awarded each year to the best Maori farm in the district. Mr. Peroni has been selected as the owner of the best farm, and this year the donor himself is present to make the award. After the ceremony, there's a tea party, and the visitors are able to meet some of the local people. It's been an unusual and interesting interlude in life at Clevedon. A sunny afternoon and the players make their first entrance in Hamilton's new open-air theatre. In Piranha Park, tall poplars surround the sloping theatre floor and grassy stage. The wings are hedges, specially trimmed and designed. The dressing rooms, the shade of the trees. For the official opening, all the performers are Hamilton children. Their music, choirs and costume ballets make a merry afternoon. It's fitting that the children open this first theatre of its kind in the Dominion, and all those who've contributed towards the scheme hope that other centres will soon be following their example. Before the biggest event in New Zealand cricket for many years, the New Zealand team is practicing at Hagley Park. Colin Snedden, medium pace spin bowler, sends one down to Hadley, the New Zealand captain. At the nets is VJ Scott of Auckland. And beside him, the team's vice captain, Merv Wallace, one of the country's leading batsmen. Tom Burt, left hand spin bowler to Smith of Canterbury, one of the Colts of the team. Sutcliffe, who made two brilliant centuries for Otago against the MCC, and Cowie, New Zealand's best fast bowler. Tyndall is behind the wickets, and here's Cowie again. Hadley has a strong team to face the MCC, and on the first day at Lancaster Park, the opposing captains toss the coin. Hammond wins the toss and sends New Zealand into bat. The weather is overcast, threatening rain, as Hadley and Sutcliffe take the field. Sutcliffe on the far side. And the first day's play begins. Sutcliffe facing the bowling. Pollard to Sutcliffe and the runs are mounting up. A hard off drive and two more runs at it. Both Sutcliffe and Hadley are driving the ball about the field and seem to be in full command of the bowling. Right to Hadley, who's scoring freely. A leg glance and they run it out. Both batsmen are close to the 50 mark when light rain begins to fall. And the fieldsmen go scampering for cover. But the ground is in good condition and the rain has little effect on the pitch. After play resumes, the crowd see Hadley reach his century with a magnificent arm drive. When the day's play ended, New Zealand had eight wickets down for 306. Sutcliffe made 58, and Hadley was finally caught off Yardley for 116. Cowie and Burt were the not out batsmen. The second day begins and the weather is still overcast. The Englishmen are working hard to dismiss Cowie and Burt. 20,000 people have turned out to watch the end of New Zealand's innings and see the Englishmen bat. Pollard bowling to Cowie, and minutes later he's out for 45, and New Zealand declare with nine wickets down for 345. New Zealand are in a strong position. Before the MCC opens, Smith, the team's slow spin bowler, tosses one down to Evans, the MCC wicketkeeper. But the crowd are not kept waiting and Washbrook and Yardley take the field for England. Washbrook on the far side. Cowie bowling. And the bumping ball hits Washbrook on the thigh. Cowie's pace is troubling the Englishman and it's not long before Washbrook is out for two. Edwidge facing Scott. Now 
away to Yardley. And it's square cut to the boundary. The MCC have 22 on the board at the luncheon adjournment, and Edwidge and Yardley leave the field. The autograph hunters have a field day, and Betzer is cornered by some of the younger fans. Cowie to Yardley again, and he drives it to the arm. The Englishman scored steadily, and their total had reached 79 when both Edrich and Yardley were up. Next man in was Compton, followed by Hammond, England's test captain and outstanding figure in world cricket. Hammond is immediately on form, his perfect timing and placements delighting the crowd. This is Hammond's last innings in test cricket. Cowie to Hammond, driven through covers for a single. Hammond is playing in a most entertaining style, and the crowd are applauding every run. is scoring with finished strokes and he turns Snedden to the leg. The New Zealand fielding is efficient, but the runs are mounting. Kai to Hammond. The ball wraps him on the pads and they run a smart single. But Kai is keeping a good length and a moment later Hammond lifts the ball and Sutcliffe dives for it. Bad luck and Sutcliffe has hurt his hand. Cowie again and he's out. Sutcliffe makes no mistake this time and Hammond is out for 79. With another outstanding innings to his credit, the English captain receives a long ovation as he leaves the field. The sun is getting low and the remaining English batsmen hit out. Cowie is still bowling aggressively and the wickets are falling. Cowie bowls. A fast rising ball and Smith skies it. Burke is running back. Yes, he's held it. The last wicket of the game has fallen. Evans and Betzer are not out at the end of play, and Cowie is the hero of the day with six wickets for 83, an outstanding performance. The scoreboard reads New Zealand 345, the MCC seven down for 265, and the game is a draw. Heavy rain soaked the pitch overnight and continued into the next day. The English team are leaving. It's a disappointing end to the game, but this test match has brought new interest and enthusiasm to cricket in New Zealand.